Good morning. So in this particular video, we're going to discuss liquid-liquid extraction. So one of the application of liquid-liquid extraction is in the production of 100% uh, pure ethanol that is used for gasoline. Uh, if you <coughs> gasoline is 10% ethanol. So you cannot use uh, ethanol that is 95% for gasoline. So generally the process is uh, originally your your ethanol solution, say for example, you have a 50% ethanol solution. Um, it could be extracted with benzene, you know? So the ethanol can be extracted with benzene. And then the uh, benzene ethanol solution is separated using distillation. So that will be able to produce a 100% ethanol. So this is one of the example for application of a liquid liquid extraction. So let me share the uh, the PowerPoint. So So we're going to discuss uh, the equipments, no, and also the the requirements, no, for the liquid liquid extraction. And also we're going to discuss some of the previous concept questions, no, uh, objective question that is asked regarding liquid liquid extraction. <clears throat> okay, so these are the steps and requirement of a uh, liquid liquid extraction. So the first requirement is there must be a, a vessel wherein turbulent mixing will occur. You know? So imagine you have a solution that contains the solute that you're going to extract and then you're going to add the solvent. So the two must be mixed thoroughly or in turbulent fashion so that you'll be able to extract the solute from the original solution. You know? You're going to transfer the solute uh, to the solvent. <clears throat> okay, so after turbulent mixing, probably you need another vessel or another tank wherein the liquid layer are separated. So generally, the two the two liquids are immiscible. No, so for example, you have water and benzene, as in my first example, and you're extracting ethanol. So water is immiscible in benzene. So after the turbulent mixing and then you place them in a, another uh, tank, after some time, the two, the two layer, the two liquid will be separated. You know? <clears throat> Yun nga lang, the density of liquids are almost equal. Okay? Unlike in distillation or in gas absorption, wherein one of, the, uh, one of the stream is gas and the other stream is liquid, they separate relatively slower in liquid-liquid extraction. So the size of the uh, liquid layer separation tank is relatively larger. No, it will require much higher residence time. <clears throat> Alam niyo na naman yun sa kinetics. Ano? When you have much higher residence time, the size of the vessel also increases. Okay, so these are some illustration of the liquid-liquid extraction. Uh, so the simpler, so simplest one is one that you have a separate mixer and another tank for the separation. You know? So separate mixer settler setup like this one. You know? <clears throat> so as you can see, you have a tank where you introduce the feed. The feed contains the solvent and the original solution. And then you have a mixer, and then you have bubbles to create turbulence. And then after, probably you know the residence time, 
no? Parang CSTR lang. Uh, and then it will exit into another container, no? So in this container, <coughs> if you still remember, uh, you need some time to separate the two. And then uh, you will have the extract. So the extract contains the most of the solute. Ano? Ganun yung definition yan. Whichever of the two contains most of the solute is the extract. And then the, the flow that contains a uh, lesser amount of solute is the raffinate. Pero pwede rin naman na generally this is the organic layer. The extract is the organic layer. And then the raffinate is the, uh, the water layer. <clears throat> okay. So the the liquid liquid extractor could also be contained in a single vessel. So you have a portion that is enclosed wherein the turbulent mixing happens, you know, and then it just goes out to a larger vessel wherein the separation uh, occur. So you can you can withdraw the raffinate on the bottom and then you can withdraw the extract on the top. <clears throat> okay. So these are two designs for liquid-liquid extraction. And then this is another ano, no, possible equipment for liquid-liquid extraction. The first one is a perforated plate or sheep tray tower. <clears throat> so when you say perforated plate or sheep tray tower, <clears throat> just like in distillation, ano, uh, this, this equipment, this liquid-liquid separator contains a circular plates or semicircular plates okay that have holes in it you know? so basically what happens is that you spray the heavy liquid at the top you spray it at the top and then you introduce the light liquid at the bottom so as you can see uh, generally what happens is that the the light liquid can can form uh, smaller particles or bubbles and then because of this small particle, you have larger area of contact. And then the, the, the solute you know, transfer from the original solution to the solvent. Parang ganun lang yan, ano? Okay, so this is perforated plate or sheep tray tower. <clears throat> the next equipment design is you're going to use uh, agitated uh, extraction tower. <clears throat> So we have wire mess, no? several wire mess calming sections. And then right here you have paddle agitator. So basically this paddle agitator, this corresponds to the you know, turbulent mixing step. And then uh, the heavier liquid goes down, no? the heavier liquid goes down. And then the lighter liquid goes up. And then the, the wire mess, no? the wire mess in effect, separates no the two layer uh, more completely so because probably the, the the velocity of the liquid is reduced to zero so they will the two layers will separate you know? so this is a agitated extraction tower <clears throat> okay so just try to remember no it's, it's quite logical that the heavy liquid is sprayed at the top of the tower and then the light liquid is sprayed at the bottom of the tower and then the tower uh, can be filled with rashi greens or burl, burl saddle just, just, just like your gas absorption you know? so just like your gas absorption there are two types of gas absorption you, you could use uh, perforated plates or sheep plates or you could use uh, rashi greens you know, to fill up your tower So this is filled tower, you know? So these are these are the pack towers, you know? So you have here rashi greens or burl saddles. Tapos, pero, pero basically ganun din, you know? You spray the heavy liquid on top and then you introduce the light liquid at the bottom. Okay, so generally, uh, generally the light liquid will form uh, small particles, you no? Know? So imagine you have rashi greens here. So there will be exchange of solute no uh, <clears throat> generally this is your solvent you know? then this is your water so the water is trans the solute is transferred from from the water to your organic solvent okay and then this will form your light liquid outlet and generally this is your 
uh, concentrated, you know, this is your concentrated solution. Tapos, uh, the heavy liquid outlet, this is your uh, weak, this is going to be your weak solution. Okay? So these are spray type pack towers used for uh, liquid liquid extraction. I hope I hope you still remember no, these equipments for LLE liquid liquid extractions. <clears throat> okay, so plading. Usually we we associate plading in you know, in gas absorption. Because it's mas madaling imagine sa gas absorption. You know, when when the pressure of the gas is quite high, if you still remember your you know, gas absorption. Diba you introduce the gas at the bottom of the tower and then you introduce the the solvent or the liquid at the top of the tower. <clears throat> so what happens in gas absorption is when when the pressure of the gas is very high, it will prevent the the liquid, you know, from flowing down the the tower. So what happens is that you you will have some flooding, no, in gas absorption tower. So this is also possible in ano, in liquid liquid extraction. So, <clears throat> how is this possible? How is flooding possible in liquid liquid extraction? Where you have two two liquid streams, ano, flowing counter current to each other. So what happens is that <clears throat> if you're going to increase no the flow rate of one of the stream continuously, whether it's the light phase or the uh, heavy pace, no? whether it's the dispersed pace or the continuous pace, as long as you increase uh, one of the pace gradually and then you held the other stream, you know, flow rate constant, uh, what will happen is there will come a time wherein uh, the dispersed pace and the, and the continuous pace will coalesce, you know? So what will happen is you will have only one stream, whether it's going out in the bottom of the tower or it's going out up, no. So you, you in the end, when 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 flooding occurs in LLE, if you can imagine it, you will have you will have only one outlet stream. So that's that's when we say that we have flooding in a liquid liquid extraction. You know, a point is reached where. The dispersed phase coalesces, no? the hold up of that phase increases, and finally both phases live together through the continuous phase outlet. No? So ganun yung ano. That's how plodding in liquid liquid extraction occur. No? So possible din ng plodding dito. May plodding ano rin. No? May plodding phenomena rin sa liquid liquid extraction. <clears throat> okay, and then if you're going to analyze the phase rule, in liquid liquid extraction if you still remember the gibbs space equation this is the gibbs space equation f is the number of ano, independent variable or the degrees of freedom ano? c is the number of components and then p is the number of paces and then itong plus two is the temperature and pressure <clears throat> so if we're going to help the temperature and pressure known or constant so these are known variables so <clears throat> The, the equation is reduced to C minus P, okay? So generally in, in liquid-liquid extraction, you have three components, no? Uh, the, original, the original solvent, for example, it's, it, most of the time it's water, okay? The this extraction solvent, most of the time it's, it's an organic solvent, no? And then the solute, so you have three components. Tapos phases, generally you have two phases, you know, uh, the organic liquid phase and the aqueous liquid phase. So 3 minus 2, you, the answer, the degrees of freedom is generally equal to 1. No? So pag, pag, uh, if you have a liquid-liquid extraction system, what, what this is telling is that if you know the composition in one of the phases, so for example, you know the composition in the water phase, in the aqueous phase, you should be able to calculate the ano, the concentration in the in the ano, in the organic phase ano? <clears throat> so if you still remember the ano, the the graphical solution basically you just you just ano, you just try to draw the tie line and then the tie line will you know will will give you the ano, the composition uh, of the other phase no 
So if you have a ternary diagram, you still remember the ternary diagram. If you have a ternary diagram with uh, with tie lines, all you need to do is locate the the concentration of one of the paces, and then on the other side of the tie line, you you will be able to find the ano, the the concentration of the other phase. Tandaan nyo pa? Tandaan nyo pa sa, probably sa physical chemistry. No? Physical chemistry, dinidikas na din natin yan. Something like, <clears throat> sa physical chemistry kasi we have the, sorry. Ito pala yun, ano? Ito pala yun. So ganito yung ternary diagram, ano? <clears throat> so, what, what I'm trying to say is, if this is your ternary diagram, if you still remember our uh, equilateral triangle in physical chemistry, and what I'm trying to say is, if you know the concentration on one phase, no, bawa yun, alam, ay, alam nyo itong B, okay, uh, tapos this is the tie line, as you can see, you can, you can predict the concentration on the other phase, no, the concentration would be A, okay. So this is the ternary diagram in our physical chemistry. So let's let's review the part of this ternary diagram. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, this is the tie line. Ano? So on purpose ng tie line is uh, you, you can use this to uh, to predict no the concentration on the other phase, knowing the concentration on, on one of the phase. Okay. Uh, another thing, if if you know the concentration, the overall concentration of the mixture. You could you could probably also predict the concentration on one phase and also on the other phase. Ano? Tapos, as you can see, this tie line converts into a point. Okay, so that particular point is known as the plate point. No, so this is the plate point. Yeah, this is the plate point P. Okay, and then if you still remember, uh, this is the envelope curve. No, this one. This is the envelope curve. So whenever the when, whenever the point is inside the envelope curve, you will have two a two phase uh, system, no? And then when it is outside the envelope curve, you will have a one phase system. Okay, so this is temperature dependent. You can only draw it a specific ternary diagram for a specific temperature. So the question here is, what happens if you're going to increase the temperature? What will happen to the size of the envelope curve? So generally, when the temperature increases, the solubility also increases. I know that's a general case. So what happens is that the, the one phase region increases because the, the solute will become soluble. Ano? So the one phase region increases. The solubility of one solvent to the other solvent also increases. So uh, the envelope curve decreases in size. So as the temperature increases, the solubility increases, the envelope curve decreases in size. So, tinanong na ito sa mga previous board exam. Ano? <clears throat> okay? So, the two-phase region will eventually decrease in size. So, liliit yung envelope curve. Matandaan nyo lamang yun. Ano? Common sense lang naman. Pag tumaas ang temperature, tataas din ang solubility. So, yung two-phase region liliit. Yung envelope curve, yung area niya na nakakover, liliit din. No? Okay, let's try to remember that. <clears throat> okay, so dati meron ding tinanong no, regarding the the minimum solvent. So tinatanong kung saan daw nagko-correspond yung minimum solvent. So just like sa just like sa ano sa <clears throat> sa sa gas absorption, ano? It, the minimum solvent uh corresponds to the pinch point. So how, how are we going to illustrate this in an in graphical method? So basically if if you know one of the points, say for example L sub O, ano, alam niyo yung L sub O. So in order to to predict the minimum solvent, di ba ang ginagawa dun, if you still remember, you just draw a tie line. You still know how to draw a tie line in this kind of ano, ternary diagram. Ito na yung nakajin couples ano? So just draw a tie line. Tapos, uh, uh, yung, yung other end, no? this corresponds to B1 minimum. Itong concentration na to. No? This corresponds to B1 minimum. 
So if you still remember, uh, if we're going to connect the V1 minimum with, uh, with this one, uh, this is your L sub O, L sub N. This is the L sub N. Ano? Tandaan niyo pa ba yung sa, yung diniscuss natin sa leaching? Ano? This is the year L sub N. Parang ito yung final underflow. Pero since ano nga to, uh, final rapinate to. Ano? Ito yung final rapinate concentration. Kapag kinonect niyo yung B1 minimum at saka yung L sub N, tapos kinonect niyo rin yung original L sub O, tapos yung original concentration ng solvent, you will find the concentration of the mixture. So using this concentration of the mixture, you will you'll be able to find the minimum solvent. No? So, parang ano lang to, ano, uh, medyo graphical method. Yung, yung expression nung question sa, sa, ano, sa board exam is, parang tinanong lang niya kung saan nagko-correspond yung minimum solvent. So, the answer is on the pinch point. Okay? <clears throat> so, pinch point yung answer dun sa multiple choice. Kasi parang this one is also the pinch point. Ano? Saturated kasi yung ano, parang saturated yung solution when you when you connect L sub O with B sub 1 using the ano, the Thailand. So pinch point number. Okay, so let's let's go to the simplest calculation ng liquid liquid extraction. <clears throat> so the simplest calculation ng liquid liquid extraction, ito muna yung i-discuss natin dito sa uh, sa video na to ano yung distribution coefficient the use of distribution coefficient or the k value tapos dun sa susunod na video uh, we're, we're going to discuss the counter current no the counter current no and then the the multi stage ano the multi stage cross cross current liquid liquid extraction pag medyo madami na <clears throat> actually itong distribution coefficient uh, technique of calculation for liquid liquid extraction. Pwede pa rin naman to hanggang dalawang ano, cross current. Pwede practical pa, ano? Pero pag lima na yung cross current, merong merong equation na ginagamit, ano? <clears throat> so sa susunod na video natin kukunin. Ito muna dito muna tayo sa simpleng ano, distribution coefficient or KD, yung ibang uh, reference ang tawag dito ay KD, ano? So basically ang K or distribution coefficient value ay equal sa Y sub I over X sub I. Yung, yung Y sub I, yan yung concentration sa extract phase. Remember, extract ito yung, generally ito yung organic, ano, no? organic layer. O, pero yung ano, yung, yung, ex, yung exact definition ng extract phase, yung mas marami yung ano, the, the, the phase that contains the majority of the solute. Ano? Pero generally, this is the organic layer. <clears throat> Tapos, divided by the concentration sa raffinate phase. Yung raffinate phase naman, generally, this is the aqueous layer, the water layer. No? Y sub I over X sub I. <clears throat> Tapos, since yung, yung basis natin ng liquid-liquid ano, extraction, basically, ano lang yan, ratio lang yan ng solubility. Ano? Kung baga, pag mas mataas yung solubility dun sa isang solvent, uh, mas maraming solute yung pupunta doon. Okay? Kung mas mababa, mas lesser yung amount ng solid na pupunta doon. So, itong, ito yung generally ginagamit na equation Y sub I over X sub I. Pero, pwede rin ano, solubility. Ano? Pwede rin solubility. <clears throat> pwede rin solubility yung definition nito. Ano? So, solubility generally sa organic layer divided by solubility sa water layer. Pwede rin ganyan. Na na? So, mamaya mak makakakita tayo sa mga sample problem natin na meron mga solubility values Tapos gagamitin natin yung to calculate the distribution coefficient. Tapos yung makukuha natin distribution coefficient, uh, we, we can use this to predict the, ano, the extraction efficiency. Okay, so let's let's try to solve some problem. Okay. The solubility of benzoic acid in water is 3.4 grams per liter. In, in carbon tetrachloride, its solubility is 
33.3 grams per liter. So as you can see, mas mataas yung solubility ng car ng ano ng benzoic acid sa carbon tet. So halimbawa, yung benzoic acid is originally in water. Pag nilagyan mo siya ng carbon tet, most of the benzoic acid will will transfer to the carbon tet. Ano kasi mas soluble siya sa carbon tet. So the pH of the a saturated solution of benzoic acid in water is 2.8. <clears throat> So question number one, uh, the partition coefficient for benzoic acid in a water carbon tet CCL4 and a solvent pair is approximately equal to blank. So sabi ko nga sa inyo, generally, uh, you, you, can, you can easily calculate this, yung kanyang K, yung kanyang distribution coefficient. Ano lang to? Ano? Solubility lang sa organic. Ang organic natin dito is CCL4. Tapos divided by sa solubility sa water. So basically, this is 33.3 divided by 2.4. sorry, uh, 3.4. So ganun lang. Parehas naman sila ng units. Ano? Grams per liter. Grams per liter. <clears throat> so, okay. Get, get your calculator para hindi kayo ma-inep. Para ma-inep kasi ano? So, 33.3 divided by 3.4. We're supposed to get something like 9.8. No? Okay nyo ba ito? Letter C? We're supposed to get this one. <clears throat> okay. So, number 2. Let's go to number 2. This is quite simple. Alam, madaling madali. Tandaan nyo lamang basta yung, ano, yung definition ng yung mechanism na yung mechanism ng liquid-liquid extraction. Ano lang yan? Difference in solubility. So solubility yung pinaka-factor talaga nito. <clears throat> what weight of benzoic acid will be transferred to an aqueous phase of 1 gram of benzoic acid <clears throat> if 1 gram of benzoic acid were dissolved in 100 ml of carbon tetrachloride <clears throat> and the solution were extracted with 100 ml of water? So originally, yung benzoic acid ay nasa carbon tet. Tapos nalaglagay ka ng 100 ml ng water. So the question is, ilang ilang grams ng benzoic acid yung uh, magta-transfer sa water? Okay? So, probably, asya naman siguro dito sa taas. Ano? So solve natin dito sa taas. <clears throat> so, sabi ko nga sa inyo, um, ganun din lang yan. So, K, is equals to y sub i. Yung y sub i natin, organic layer over x sub i. Yung x sub i natin, yun yung water layer. No? So, nasolve natin yung, ito yung ating, ano, no, 9.8. Yung ating k is 9.8. So, kasi the same system, ano? Benzoic acid, water, at saka CCL4. Tapos yung, yung y sub i natin, uh, at equilibrium, imagine niyo after some time, ano? At equilibrium, <coughs> Uh, you will have 1 gram of benzoic acid minus X. Let X be the number of grams na na-extract ng water. Okay? Kailan ba yan? So X going to let X be the grams of uh, benzoic acid. I'm just going to call that BA extracted by water. Ano? Or just simply extracted. Okay? So, you will have 1, 1 gram minus X, and then divided by the amount of ano, carbon tet, that's 100 ml. Okay? Tapos sa denominator X sub I, X sub I is X divided by, this is carbon tet, ano? 100 ml of carbon tet. Sa so, denominator naman niya, 100 ml of water. Do you still remember? This quite simple solution in ano, in liquid liquid extraction using distribution coefficient. Still remember this? <clears throat> so you can you can you can cancel this out this to 100 ml and then you can simply punch this in in, in your calculator. One one minus x divided by x is equal to 9.8. So just try to find the answer. What will be the value of x? X is the grams of benzoic acid extracted by water. Ano? Okay, get your calculator. Parang hindi maino. Which is simply 9.8 alpha equals 
And then we have 1 minus x divided by x. So I'm getting something like 0 0.09. You know? Good. Letter D, you know? 0 0.09. x is equals to 0 0.09. 0 0.09 grams. Of course, konti lang talaga yung may extra kasi this is in grams. Ha? Kasi ano, mas soluble siya dun sa sa carbon tet. So, it will it will remain on the carbon tet. Konting-konti lang yung may extra ng the same amount of water. <clears throat> so, this is letter D. Ano? Okay? 0 0.09 grams. It's quite simple, di ba? Solve another problem. <clears throat> the partition coefficient for an organic solute A distributed between ether and water is 5. Okay? That is K, uh, solubility or Y sub I, ether over water is equals to 5. So parang Y ether divided by X water is equals to 5. Now, question number 3. <clears throat> if 10 grams of A were dissolved in 100 ml of water, what weight of A would be removed by a single extraction with 100 ml of ether? Actually, basically, the same, the same lang. Ano? Kaya lang, this time, we're going to let X be the amount of uh, A that is extracted by ether. So, nasa ano na siya? Nasa numerator na siya instead na nasa denominator ka mukha kanina. Ano? <clears throat> so, let me solve it right here. Ano? Number 3. Number three. So basically, ganun pa rin naman yung equation natin. Ano? K is equals to y sub i over x sub i. Okay. Tapos, <clears throat> we're going to let uh, x be the grams no? of A extracted. This time by ether, no? Okay. So, let's substitute the given. The given is K is equals to 5. And then Y sub I is equals to X. And then you have 100 ml of ether. Notice that I have the organic layer at the numerator. Ano? The organic concentration at the numerator. So, this is ether. Tapos, uh, originally you have 10 grams of A. Tapos yung minus ko lang yung x. Ito yung natira sa water layer. So divided by 100 ml sa water layer. Okay? So ganun ulit. This will cancel out. And then you can you can use your calculator to find 5.0 x divided by 10 minus x. So the value of x is equal to okay, try to use your calculator so that you can confirm my answer. 5, I sorry. 5 alpha equal alpha x divided by 10 minus x. And then by 10. So I have 8.3, you know? 8.3. So yun, letter B, diba? Letter B. Okay. So this is letter B. Dali lang, ano? <clears throat> Question number four. What weight of A would be extracted by two sequential extraction of the water with 50 ml of ether for its extraction? So basically, dalawang best nilang isosolve, ano? Tapos, imbis na 100 ml, yung ether, 50-50. So, ang mangyayari dyan, you will have X1, yun yung unang ma-extract ma ng 50 ml of water, tapos, ah, uh, Next equation, you will have X2. <clears throat> Yun yung ma-extract ma ng pangalawang 50 ml. And then you basically, you, you just add, you simply add the two, ano, no? the two X's, X1 plus X2. It will give you the answer for number four. So, practical pa naman tong gamitin, itong distribution coefficients sa dalawang stage na ano, cross flow. 
So, probably kaya naman natin pagkasya yun din. No? So, i-clear ko lang. O kaya naman, ano, tandaan na lang natin yung given. Ano, 10 grams of A, tapos 100 yung water, 50 ml yung ether. Dalawang beses. So, mag -ano lang tayo. Mag-board tayo. Ano? Mag-whiteboard tayo. Okay. So pag ano, pag cross flow, dalawang cross flow, parang ganito 'yan, ano? Na liquid liquid extraction. So ito yung unang stage. Papasok dito yung 100 ml na water solution. Okay? Tapos imi-mix mo siya sa 50 ml na ether. So yung product dalawa, di ba? Yung isa, you will have the 50 ml ether solution. Tapos, uh, ang ginagawa generally, ano, para mas simple lang yung calculation, ina-assume na yung lumalabas dito, 100 ml pa rin. 100 ml pa rin ng water solution. Parang volume balance. Ano? Tapos papasok siya sa another stage. This is the second stage. mag a add kayo ng 50 ml ng ether. <clears throat> Tapos, uh, yun, you will have another 50 ml of ano. Ether solution. Okay? And then you will have the uh, original 100 ml water solution. Kaya nga lang, mababa na yung concentration niya. Yeah, parang ganyan yun. Ano? <clears throat> so, uh, ganun din. Ganun din yung solution. Ano? Uh, you still have K is equals to Y sub I over X sub I. Okay? So, yun nga lang, uh, mag, ang ilalat natin ay x1. No, let x1 be the grams of A. I think it's A, ano? A yung solute natin. Extracted by ether. Extracted by ether. Dito yan, sa first, ano na? Sa first, uh, first equipment, no? Sa first extraction equipment. So, di ba ang ating K ay 5? Okay? <clears throat> Tapos X1. If you still remember, 50 ml yung ether. No? So, divided by 50. Tapos, originally you have 10 grams of A. So, minus X1. Tapos, you have 100 ml of water. This is water. This 50 is ml of ether. So just try to use your calculator, get your calculator, and then try to, to calculate x1. So x1 is approximately equal to 5. Okay. I'm getting 7.1. Ano? So, X1 is 7.1. This is 7.1 grams. Ito yung, ito yung amount ng A na na-extract. Ano? Do sa unang, do sa, sa, unang, sa unang extraction vessel. Tapos, pasok na naman ulit yung uh, water solution dito sa pangalawang vessel. <clears throat> okay? Siyempre, this time hindi na 10 grams yung A niya. Ano na lang? 10 minus 7.1. 2.9 na lang yung kanyang A. Ano? Pero you, you will have the same equation. Kaya nga lang, syempre, tawagin na natin yung may extract sa second stage as x2. So, x2 yung pangalawa. Ano? It's the same as this. Grams of extracted by ether. So, <clears throat> halimbawa, we still have 5.0 tapos x2 divided by 50 ml of ether. I hope you can follow. Tapos, uh, hindi na 10, ano? 10 minus 7.1, that's 2.9 na lang. 2.9 grams of A minus X2. Tapos divided by 100 M. Tapos try to solve for X2. Tapos add mo na lang sa X1 yun, ano? 
So again, you have five. Get your calculator. Have to confirm my answer. Alpha x2 divided by 50. Sa baba, you have 2.9 minus x2 divided by 100. Therefore, shift so. I got 2.1. No? It's 2.1. So this is 2.1 grams of A. And then basically you just add the two. So the total amount of uh, of A that is extracted <coughs> using two stage extraction cross flow is 9.2 grams. No? 9.2 grams of A extracted. So this is the final answer. <clears throat> okay. Mamaya, I'm, I'm going to we're going to review ano, yung equation na ginagamit pag cross flow. Halimbawa, kasi pag mga lima na yan, limang cross flow, medyo tedious na itong ganitong method. Ano? Merong, merong formula yan. Sa susunod na video. Tuturo ko, uh, tuturo ko sa inyo. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so ito yung ito yung answer natin ano 9.2 grams letter C. Ito yun. Okay? So let's try to solve the ano, the, the last problem for distribution coefficient. The MIRT index, parang handbook to, ano, sa BS Chem, gives the following data for solubility. <clears throat> uh, one gram of aspirin or salicylic acid, so the first data, parang ano to, one gram of aspirin, itong unang, itong, itong unang ano, this one, itong unang set of data, parang one gram of aspirin dissolves in 300 ml of water, okay, and then in 17 ml of chloroform or in 12 ml of ethyl ether. No? In 1 gram of aspirin. <clears throat> Imagine nyo naman, ano? Kung baga, pag alimbawa, you only use 100 ml of water, yung 1 gram of aspirin, it will not completely dissolve, di ba? Yan, yan yung ibig sabihin nito. So you need approximately 300 ml of water to dissolve aspirin. Or in the case of salicylic acid, here, salicylic acid, you will need more water, 460 ml of water. No? And then 42 ml of chloroform and or 3 ml of ethyl ether. <clears throat> You're still familiar with this? Ito, laging tinatanong ko ni... Tinatanong ko sa chemistry. So, sa day one, ano? Salicylic acid at saka yung aspirin. <clears throat> do, you still, do you still perform uh, the experiment that produce aspirin, uh, synthesis of aspirin. So basically, ang ginagawa lang doon is your salicylic acid, you just add acetic anhydride. Ano? So, tandaan nyo na o kaya i-google mo ano? how to synthesize aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid. Basically, this is salicylic acid plus acetic anhydride. Kumisan, the question is, is as, uh, what, what, what chemical is used to produce acetic acid from salicylic acid? Parang ganun, ano? What chemical is added to salicylic acid to produce aspirin? So, pag wala talaga kayong idea na it's acetic anhydride, no? <clears throat> Kasi supposed to be, this is, a, this is a, a standard experiment sa organic chem. Kaya lang yung iba hindi na nagagawa, no? Tsaka sa PCHEM din, ano? Sa PCHEM, ito rin yung ginagawang sa ano, kung meron kayong uh, bump calorimeter, ito rin yung reaction na ginagawa, di ba? So kaya dapat alam nyo, alam nyo by heart, tandaan nyo by heart yung reaction ng acetic anhydride at salicylic acid. Lagi rin lumalabas yung sabon. Anyway, 
going back to this problem, basically what you can do is using this data, one gram dissolved in 300 ml of water. This is solubility data. Ano? One gram dissolved in 17 ml of chloroform. You can, you can calculate the, ano, the distribution coefficient. And then you can use this to solve to solve a uh, distribution coefficient problem in liquid-liquid extraction. So for example, if 10 grams of aspirin will dissolve in 3,000 ml of water, what weight of aspirin would be removed by single extraction with 3,000 ml of peter peter? So once, once you have calculated the distribution coefficient with respect to water and ethyl ether, you can use that to solve number five. No? Tapos, Basically, number six, ganun din. Ano? If 10 grams of salicylic acid, ito, dito, ka naman, dito naman kayo kukuha ng value ng distribution coefficient sa salicylic acid. We're dissolving 4,600 ml of water. What weight of salicylic acid would be extracted by two sequential extraction with 2,300 ml of chloroform for its extraction? So, ganun. Ano? Okay. So medyo mahaba ng konti. So let me share a, ano, a whiteboard to solve number 5. Let me clear this. <clears throat> so to memorize. I mean, memorize yung mga iba na. Medyo madami. <clears throat> okay. So first, let's let's calculate the ano, no? for for the problem number five. Let's calculate the k value. <clears throat> so this is basically k value is so uh, we have ether and water, no? So solubility in ether of your aspirin divided by solubility in water. So <clears throat> it is stated that the solubility in ether uh, 1 gram of aspirin will dissolve in 12 ml of ether. Okay? Tapos 1 gram of aspirin will dissolve in 300 ml of water. Okay? So basically, from from this equation, you can you can conclude that uh, the distribution coefficient for of ether in ether water system is 300 divided by 12. Tapos we're going to use this value, no? We're going to use this value to calculate the amount of uh, aspirin extracted with 3,000 ml huh, of ether from 3,000 ml of water. So, ganun din, ano? we're going to use this equation, y sub i over x sub i. Ito yung concentration sa ether, ito yung concentration sa, sa water. No? So, 300 divided by 12. <clears throat> Tapos, y sub i is... Um, so, so, we're going to let x with the grams of uh, aspirin no? extracted by ether. <clears throat> okay. So, 300 divided by 12 tapos uh, we have X all over 3,000. We use 3,000 ml of ether. Tapos, uh, <clears throat> originally you have 10 grams, ano? 10 grams of aspirin. So 10 grams of aspirin. So minus X. Tapos divided by 3,000. 3,000 ml of water. So actually, these two value will cancel out. Yun lamang yan. Eh? 3,000 divided by 12 tapos uh, equal sa x all over 10 minus x. No? Just try to use your calculator to find that value. 
3,000 divided by 12. Is equal lamang siya sa x. Tapos 10 minus x. Ano? Okay, tapos shift solve. Ano? It should be 300 lang pala. 300 divided by 12. So, 9.6, di ba? Are you getting it in your calculator? 9.6. Okay? So, x is equal to 9.6. Uh, this is grams of aspirin, ano? Grams of aspirin extracted by ether. Okay? So, tingnan natin kung anong letter. So, letter D, ano? Uh, thing 9.6. <laughs> okay, yung pangalawa. Let's let's try number 6. So, dalawang, dalawang best tayo mag extract Take to 2,300 yung chloroform. Ano? Uh, Siyempre, kakalculate muna natin yung K ng salicylic acid. With respect to water and chloroform. Tandaan nyo, ano? 460 ml yung water, tapos 42 ml lamang yung chloroform. For, para ma-dissolve yung 1 gram ng salicylic acid. Tapos, 4,600 ml yung water originally, ang pinang-exact na lang beses na 3 to 2, 3. Okay? So, let's, let me share a whiteboard. Okay, so let me clear this one first. <clears throat> dalawang ano na dalawang stage yung extraction natin cross flow stage 1 and then we have stage 2 uh, originally we have 4600 we have 4600 ml of water solution Tapos, we extract this with 2,300 ml of uh, chloroform, ano? CHCl3. Okay. So, ganito yung sistema natin, ano? <clears throat> so, the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate this, the K, you know, for salicylic acid. No? For salicylic acid. Um, so, kung tandaan nyo pa, 1 gram of salicylic acid will dissolve in 42 ml chloroform. Tapos, 1 gram of salicylic acid will will dissolve in 460 ml of water. Okay? So ang K value natin is 460 over 42. Okay, so using this ang tinatanong is how much how much ano no how much salicylic acid is extracted. So magano ulit tayo x1 x2 ano. So let x1 <laughs> And X2 with the grams of salicylic acid extracted. Okay. <clears throat> so the same equation on okay is equals to Y sub I over X sub I. <clears throat> okay, so we have 460 over 42. Tapos, X natin ito sa taas, ano? X1. <clears throat> Tapos, uh, we're using 2,300 ml of ether of chloroform. Originally, we have, I think we have 10 grams, ano? We have 10 grams of, uh, 
we have 10 grams of salicylic acid. So, susubtract natin yung X1. <clears throat> Tapos, uh, we have 4,600 ml of water. Okay. So, X1 is... This is your calculator. So, 460 divided by 42. And then we have X1 divided by 2,300. 10 minus X divided by 4,600. Uh, eight point eight point five, you know, eight point five grams. <clears throat> so this is eight point five grams. Tapos solve natin yung x two, the same in the same manner, you know? So the same k, four hundred sixty divided by forty two. Tapos we have x two. The same, you know, 2,300 ml of chloroform. And then, instead of 10 grams, kasi next up na natin yung 8.5, we only have 1.5 gram of uh, salicylic acid is left, you know? So, minus X2 divided by 4,600. So, this is the ml of water. You know? So, X2 is uh, t-shirt calculator. So, pwede siguro, palitan nyo na lang yung kaninang equation. Ano? Parehas lang naman yung, yung mababago lang dito yung, one, yung 10 lang. Ano magiging 1.5 lang? So, palitan nyo lamang yung 10 ng 1.5. Tapos, ship solve. So, you're going to get something like 1.3. Ano? One point three grams. Tapos add nyo tong dalawa, so you will have nine point eight grams. So this is the final answer for question number six. This is question number six. <clears throat> nine point eight grams. So let's, let's go back to let's go back to our PowerPoint. Let's see kung anong letter yung sagot. 9.8, no? This one. Nine point eight grams. <clears throat> okay, so ang ganda, ang ganda dito na muna tong video na to, no? Masyado nang mahaba. Baka <laughs> magka problema na tayo sa pagsisend. Baka hindi nyo na ma-download. So may second part yung ano, no? Yung liquid-liquid extractions. Tapos I'm going to cover the, ano, the counter current at saka the cross current multi-stage LLE. Okay, see you on the next video.